Oh yeah, so um, this is one of these uh, torches that has the LED at the top there and the LEDs on the side. It's already in pieces because it's a friend's torch and what happened, dropped quite a while back and unfortunately this bank of LEDs don't light up anymore but this one does. Um, so I was around here the other day so I'd already um, taken it apart there so I brought it back into pieces and we'll see if we can uh, get it working again. So this is the main board here. As you can see, we have the single LED at the top. That one should be bent back out like that. Our row of LEDs here, we have one, two, three, four along that row, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine along that row. So that gives us a total of 36 LEDs on this bank here. Here we have a resistor here, quite a big beefy one. This is a resistor that runs to this bank of LEDs and this resistor here which runs to this LED at the end. We have our switch there, one of these ones you can push once to get one mode, push again for the other mode, push again for off. Terminals there and it takes three batteries in there. Now while I was around um, his house I did have a brief look at it and I couldn't see any obvious indications of anything that was majorly wrong. This resistor was actually loose in the solder joint so I did reflow that um, but that hasn't made any difference. The switch I think is okay so we will just go through and do some basic tests and see if we can diagnose uh, what the problem here is. Alright, so I've got the multimeter here. I think first things first, I will pop a battery in. So we've got all three batteries. And let's have a look. So we've got push number one, nothing. Push number two, nothing. Push number three, nothing. Okay, well we did have something before, so let's have another look. We have a slightly dodgy battery. Let's put the... Um, battery did back on just to uh, keep those batteries in place. Alright, so as you can see we've got top light on, that's off. This one should be those lights there. So let's have a look at the battery terminals, see where our positive and negative are. positive one is this one down here. We're only drawing 2.5 volts we've got off there. Let's turn that off. 3.4 volts. So we're losing around 900 millivolts when we turn that on. So power is definitely going somewhere. Okay, let's check this resistor. Got nothing that side. Nothing that side. Again, there we go 2.52 volts that side of the resistor, 2 volts at the other side. So the voltage is definitely getting through there. Check this resistor out of matter of course. Nothing much there, nothing much there, but if we change that to that one, we should have. 2.888 volts, 2.89, and 3.17 volts at the beginning of that resistor. So we'll press the button again and make sure we get the right mode. Right, so that's the mode giving us 2.4 volts there, and 2.01 volts coming out. Seems a little bit low. Um, but it is quite a big beefy resistor that one. So here we are on the back. So we know now that we are getting voltage. We know that this wire is our ground. This is the other end of that resistor. Yep, our voltage is there. So looking at our board, we've got our negative battery connection down here. This is our resistor over here. That then comes up this track here. 
branches off down that side, comes over here, branches down this side, and over here and branches down that side. And then our ground is joined with that one there, coming down there, up there, up there, and around, and up there. So, what's possibly happening is we've either got a, let's say this solder joint here, I did reflow briefly yesterday because that was a bit dodgy. Um, Maybe we've got a slightly dodgy joint on one of these resist uh, LEDs. They are all in parallel. I can't imagine that if they're in parallel, one of them going would cause the rest of them to go out, but it may be that we've got a dead LED or a dry joint somewhere. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the uh, voltage drop across each LED. And, uh, sorry, that shot, see if that uh, brings up anything. I've checked for continuity everywhere and everything seems to be fine. So we'll just double check we've got our voltage again. Yep, 1.9 volts. Okay, so this is our ground, so we want to be this way around. So we've got 1.9 volts there, 1.9 volts there, 1.9 volts there, 1.9 volts there. That's fine there. Now looking at the battery voltage is only about 3.1 volts um, and because that one resistor was loose uh, when I checked it at my friend's house, I think what I'll do is stick in a fresh set of batteries, it may just be there's not enough power to drive those LEDs, in which case I'm wasting my time hunting for a fault that probably doesn't exist. So let me just put some new batteries in and see if that makes a difference. Two batteries there, let me just find another battery. It'll have to be one of these lovely pink Kodak ones from Poundland. If I can get one out, there it is. There we are, let's pop that in. Aha! Right, so that's working, those lights are lighting up, but they are a little bit unstable. There's a fair amount of flicker, and this is what happened before, it was flickering on and off, and then it just died completely. Let's wiggle that around. Any indication of what might be causing it? Uh, this switch, I'm not too happy with this switch, it's not the best uh, switch I've seen in the world. Uh, let's just have a look and see what, because that resistor gets really, really quite hot. Let's see what the current draw is across one of these LEDs. Short them out. Yeah, so if you try and short even one of them out, that takes the whole lot out. So that's drawing 1.023 of an amp. It's certainly quite a high current draw there. Pop our leads in the right position. So for all intents and purposes, that seems to be okay. Um, it must have just been that one resistor that uh, had worked its way, or unsoldered itself, possibly. I mean, it really is getting pretty hot. It's a very high draw with those uh, LEDs that I'm not best pleased with the temperature that's getting to. I mean, that's you, you can't keep your finger on there very long at all. Um, but I, I guess it's okay, I mean it's how they designed it um, to run. I'm just surprised they didn't use, I don't know, what value resistance is that? Let's have a look. That resistor is measuring as 2.03 ohms. We have got I think that's red. Problem is, I've blinded myself with the uh, with the lights uh, and the LEDs. So red, black, gold, gold, 
Gold, gold. Yeah, two ohms. Plus or minus five percent. We say thirty-six LEDs. So thousand, don't we? Let's do one thousand divided by thirty-six LEDs. So twenty-seven point seven milliamps uh, each LED is drawing. I don't know if that's normal for these type of LEDs, um, but yes, it certainly heats that resistor up a fair bit, which I guess is why they got such a beefy one in there. Now I haven't got any big power resistors like that, so I don't want to go changing that resistor out for something different at the minute moment in time. So I think we could probably say that's fine. Um, that appears to be working now, so it must have just been that one solder joint. There we are, first LED. That set of LEDs, still a slight flicker on them. I don't know what's causing that. That one's flickering slightly. And then off. So I think what I might do is I might just reflow all of the solder joints on it um, just to be on the safe side. And then we'll just have put it back together again and see if it's still working. Right, so just getting it back together again now. I'm not 100% happy with that flicker on those LEDs and I'm not happy with the amount of current it draws at all. Um, you know, drawing an amp, I mean the batteries aren't going to last five minutes, really. So, um, yeah, I think, um, you know, can't do much about it right now. Um, I'll leave it at uh, B as it is for the time being and possibly um, get another higher powered resistor um, of a higher value, maybe like 10 ohms. Um, Something like that, I'll have to do a bit more research on that one. I did just try sticking a 10 ohm uh, little watt, quarter watt resistor in, but it didn't work at all. Um, the resistor still works, so it hasn't actually burnt the resistor out, but it's uh, it doesn't turn on. Right, anyway, so this case is a pain in the neck to get apart, um, primarily because you've got here, there used to be two red uh, sort of pieces that just went over there. Now they appear to be clipped in, but they're clipped in in a way that it's just impossible to get off again, no matter how hard you try. Once they're in, they're in. So the only way of getting it off was um, self-evident by the uh, marks down the side there, is to basically get a Stanley knife and um, just cut the uh, cut those red plastic bits out. So yeah, so so won't have those anymore, but. Hey, it still works, so that's the uh, that's the main thing. So let's try it again. So we got our top light there, that one's fine. Switch is a bit dicky. For uh, you guys that have probably uh, noticed the obvious, the reason why the switch wasn't working so well is because there's a little rubber piece that was supposed to be in there that I'd placed somewhere else in the unit, not realizing where its intended place was. Anyway, um, there we are, so sort of brief repair, I mean it wasn't really so much a repair in the sense that by the looks of it, it was just that resistor that was loose that had stopped it working altogether in the first place and so I'd, of course I'd reflowed that yesterday uh, when I was at a friend's house. So I just hadn't thought of uh, putting new batteries in because the top LED was working I thought well the batteries must be fine but blatantly when they're drawing an amp, once the batteries get below, well by the looks of it down to about 3 volts. Uh, and you've got what we got 4.5 volts total so once you drop down to 3 volts then um, there's there's no power to uh, to not enough power to run those uh, big bank of 36 LEDs there